Hello everyone, my name is Noah. I am a PhD student at the Software Languages Lab of the Vrije Universiteit Brussel. And today I'll present our work on a parallel workers algorithm for modular analysis. So to put this work into some context, when you develop an application today in your favorite IE, you typically already get some feedback on your code without actually running it. For instance, here you can see that a null pointer exception is being detected without actually running the program. Now, how does this work? What's going on behind the scenes here? Well, the answer is static analysis. So static analysis allows you to detect possible bugs in your program, or in general, it allows you to reason about the runtime behavior of your program before you actually run it. This, of course, can be very helpful during the development of your application. The bad news is that static analysis can often be pretty slow, and that therefore analyzing a large program can take quite some time. Now, one obvious solution to increase performance is to parallelize the analysis. That is, we can attempt to speed up the analysis by computing different parts of it in parallel on multi-core or multi-CPU systems. Now, the idea of parallel analysis is not novel. However, the parallel analyses found in existing work, some of which I've listed here, often share a few limitations. Most notably, the vast majority of existing parallel analysis target static languages such as C and do not support more dynamic languages with higher order functions, such as, for instance, JavaScript. The reason for this is that such dynamic languages require a more general class of analyzers that are much more challenging to parallelize. There is indeed little work on parallel analyzers for such dynamic languages. Now, one notable exception is the paper that I've highlighted here, which parallelizes a static analysis for JavaScript. However, this parallelization strategy achieves more modest speedups than what we see for parallel analyses of static languages, and it only works for context-sensitive analyses, so not for context-insensitive ones. In this work, we propose a novel approach to parallel static analysis. Specifically, we propose the parallelization of modular analyses. So modular analyses are a general class of analyzers that support dynamic and higher order languages. What exactly is a modular analysis? Well, a modular analysis almost takes a divide and conquer approach to static analysis. It splits up the program into different parts or components, as we call them, analyzes these components in isolation, then combines their results to obtain the analysis results for the entire program. Now, Components can really be anything depending on the language or application we're analyzing. For example, if we want to analyze the following program, we could say that components correspond to the functions in our program. So since we have three functions in this program, we end up with three different components. The idea is to analyze these three functions separately using an intra-procedural analysis. However, in general, the analyses of components are not entirely independent of one another. That is, the analysis of one component can update the global analysis state, which is shared amongst all components, and it can update it in such a way that it will influence the analysis of another component. In this example, function foo writes to a global variable, resets, that is also read by function bar. Therefore, the analysis of uh, function foo updates the global analysis state, which in turn impacts the analysis of function bar. Therefore, after analyzing foo, we need to take into account this updated analysis state and reanalyze bar. In general, in a modular analysis, the analysis of one component can trigger the analysis of other components. To properly take into account these interactions, a modular analysis employs a simple worklist algorithm. Now, the full algorithm can be found in the paper. I'll just describe what it does here at a high level. In essence, this worklist algorithm is responsible for coordinating the analysis of components, taking into account the updates to the global analysis state. So, for this purpose, it will keep track of a worklist which contains all the components that still need to be analyzed. It then repeatedly picks some component from the worklist and analyzes it. As discussed previously, the analysis of one such component could trigger the analysis of other components, which are therefore added to the worklist again. This step is repeated sequentially until the worklist is empty and then the analysis has terminated. Now, the key insight for our approach here is that modular analyses actually offer an inherent opportunity for parallelization. That is, instead of analyzing these components sequentially, one could analyze multiple components at the same time in parallel. As such, we have developed a parallel version of the worklist algorithm. It computes exactly the same results as the sequential worklist algorithm, but it is able to analyze multiple components in parallel. How does it do this? Well, we use a coordinator worker setup to parallelize the worklist algorithm. So multiple workers are used to analyze multiple components in parallel. In addition, a single coordinator is responsible for updating the global analysis state and distributing work uh, to the worker. So as an example, the coordinator could decide that the following two components need to be analyzed. So it sends them to the workers and two of the workers pick them up and start analyze, analyzing these components. 
Now, in doing so, these workers actually do not have access to this global analysis state, but rather they analyze these components with respect to their own local copy of the analysis state. Using a local copy facilitates a correct coordination of the modeler analysis, and it also has some benefits in terms of efficiency. When the workers are done, they send the analysis results back to the coordinator, who then updates the global analysis state based on these analysis results. Of course, this is just a very simplistic explanation. You can find the full parallel algorithm in the paper. I do want to briefly point out an important challenge and insight of this algorithm, though, which has to do with the global analysis state. So, as already explained, when the coordinator sends um, a component to analyze to the worker, the worker makes a local copy of the global analysis state and uses that to analyze the given component with. However, it is of course possible that during the analysis of this component, other workers finish the analysis of their components, thereby updating the global analysis state. In this case, when the worker finishes its analysis and sends the results back to the coordinator, the local state that was used for the analysis by the worker may no longer be up to date with the global analysis state. So what does that mean for the analysis result here that was just computed? Well, if the coordinator determines that the recent updates to the global analysis state do indeed impact the analysis results that was just sent here, he will ensure that the component is again scheduled for analysis to take into account the updated analysis state. However, even in this case, the coordinator can use the computed results to update the analysis state. The key insight here is that updating the analysis state with previously computed results is always safe due to the monotonicity of the analysis. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters because the sooner we can update the analysis state, the faster that analysis state will converge, and the faster the analysis state converges, the faster the analysis also terminates. In this paper, we also uh, describe a few additional optimizations to our algorithm to improve its parallel efficiency. The first has to do with the exploration order, so that basically determines which components the workers decide to analyze first. It doesn't actually influence the final analysis result, but it could uh, impact the performance of the analysis. So therefore, we developed a heuristic to make workers prioritize certain components over others. Two other optimizations, timestamp dependencies and filtering the analysis results are further described in the paper. Without going into detail about them, their purpose is basically to reduce some of the workload for the coordinator. And this improves parallel efficiency, of course, because the coordinator is single-threaded and could otherwise become a bottleneck when using a high number of workers. So we have implemented this parallel worker stinger algorithm along with these optimizations in MOF, a framework for modeler analysis. Now I'll tell you more about MOF later today. The important takeaway now is that our parallel worker algorithm works for any modeler analysis, regardless of how the program is split up into components. And consequently, it can be used for any modeler analysis created in MOF. In order to evaluate our parallel worker algorithm, we measured speed ups over the sequential algorithm for two different modeler analyses using an increasing number of workers. So the first is mod f. Mod f is a function modeler analysis, which means that components correspond to function calls. Using a parallel work based algorithm, therefore, allows us to analyze multiple functions in parallel. Our approach does not depend on the choice of context sensitivity in the analysis. So we've run both seven context insensitive and seven context sensitive mod f benchmarks. On the x-axis, we have the number of workers. And on the y-axis, we have the speed up factor. Now, in both cases, we observe rather consistent speed ups up to 16 workers. For instance, when using four workers, uh, we observe for most benchmark a speed up between three and eight. And when using 16 workers for most benchmarks, we end up with a speed up between eight and 32. In general, we also notice that longer running benchmarks seem to benefit more from the parallelizations, whereas shorter running benchmarks, such as the N Boyer benchmark here, uh, actually start to slow down when increasing the number of workers. What's interesting here are the super linear speedups that we observe in some cases. For instance, one of the benchmarks here achieves a whopping 217 times speed up using only 64 workers. We have found two main reasons for such super linear speed ups. First, the exploration order, which is non deterministic for parallel analyses, even when using the same heuristic as for the sequential implementation, and therefore it can impact the performance of the analysis. Second, the fact that our parallel analyses exploit the monotonicity of the analysis to speed up their convergence, which sometimes results in less work for the parallel analysis compared to its sequential counterpart. The other modeler analysis we evaluated our approach, which is called Mod 
So MODCONC is a process modular analysis, which means that components correspond to processes in concurrent programs so that our parallel analysis can analyze multiple processes in parallel. What's interesting about MODCONC is that the analysis of a single process in turn can be done using a MODF analysis. Now, if we decide to use a parallel MODF analysis for this purpose, we basically end up with a doubly parallel analysis. Doubly parallel in the sense that we can analyze multiple processes in parallel, but we can also analyze multiple functions inside these processes in parallel. Here we see the speedups for different configurations. So horizontally, M denotes the number of workers that are used to analyze processes in parallel, and M denotes the number of workers that are used to analyze um, functions inside a single process in parallel. So in total, you can have N times N workers at any time. In general, it indeed seems that the best speedups come from using sufficient parallelism along both dimensions. So both analyzing processes in parallel, as well as analyzing functions in parallel. It, uh, also, we again notice uh, better speedups for longer running benchmarks, such as Minimax, where we achieve a speed up up to 15 times over the sequential implementation. So in conclusion, I've talked about parallelizing static analyses. Specifically, we propose the parallelization of modular analyses as a novel approach to parallel static analysis. For this purpose, we designed the parallel worklist algorithm to render any modular analysis parallel. Our approach has the following benefits. One, we have shown that it is able to achieve significant speedups over the sequential implementation. Two, our parallel analyses support dynamic higher order languages such as Scheme and JavaScript. And finally, it can directly be applied to any existing modular analysis, regardless of its context sensitivity configuration and regardless of how it splits up the program into components. So here are two final thoughts to kickstart our uh, discussion with. So first, since most of the existing work focuses on data flow analysis for static first order languages, do you think that research should focus more on analysis for dynamic higher order languages, such as Scheme and JavaScript? And second, from a more critical viewpoint, can parallelization actually help to scale up static analysis? I mean, if you have an intractable analysis and you speed it up uh, by a factor of eight through parallelization, does that really give you a tractable analysis? Thank you for your attention.